Yeah. So I'm squad leader Mark Discombe. Uh, I'm now the officer commanding Battle of Memorial Flight designate. So I've got another three months of fun before I take control of the uh, flight and take command uh, at the end of October. For the Spitfire itself, I think I describe it as flying a 1970s aircraft. And I don't mean that in a bad way. This aircraft first, first flew in 1936. So to say it was almost four decades ahead of its time is incredible. Um, I would say anyone with a private pilot's license right now could jump into a Spitfire in the air and fly it and find it quite comfortable. Um, near the ground is where you've got the issue with the Spitfire. And she tends to be very much like, as Geoffrey Wellham, who passed away last week, described, um, uh, he described the Spitfire as a thoroughbred. And we've all seen the horses around the racetrack, very skittish at slow speed, not very happy, but fantastic when you've got them on the gallop. Uh, the air conditioning is rudimentary to say the least. I have a small little um, flap that opens up uh, on the uh, front right hand side of the windscreen and that blows in a little bit of air. Um, although uh, on some of the aircraft it's deflected into what I consider now a, a, a strange position, it probably is pointing at where the deflector site would have been, um, because that would have been important to keep um, obviously free from mist um, during combat. Um, it gets warm. Um, the only thing that I always feel um, happy about when I'm flying a Spitfire is if I'm in company with a Hurricane, because it's far hotter in the cockpit of a Hurricane. Um, we've done very little. The idea is to keep this aircraft or these aircraft in, in their original format, but we've obviously had to keep up with modern um, safety requirements. So we've got a modern radio in there now, VHF radio. We have a transponder, so air traffic control can see us, and we've got a piece of equipment. It's a, a collision avoidance equipment called PFLAM, and we, we have that on board as well. The only other change we made, which again, we had a Battle of Britain hurricane pilot visitors recently noticed straight away is we've changed now our airspeed indicator to knots when it would have been in miles an hour. The unsung heroes of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight are the engineers, without a doubt. Um, the hard work and the love they put into these aircraft is um, incredible. Uh, I would say it couldn't be far off that every hour we put in the air on these aircraft there's probably an hour's worth of maintenance. So it's a labour of love uh, that they take uh, very seriously to make sure that they are in absolute tip-top condition. I think it's fair to say that, uh, again, going back to our Mark V Spitfire, when Tony Cooper saw it painted in his colours that uh, represented the aircraft he flew on D-Day, um, he said it was marvellous, although it was much nicer than it was at wartime, uh, where a lot of paintwork was done quite haphazardly. Now they are looked after um, incredibly well. Yeah, for me, when I'm walking up to the aircraft, the first thing, um, and I, I use this term very carefully, I call the, the propeller the 11-foot liquidizer. That brings into focus people um, the danger at the front. Uh, at the front of this aircraft, it's a 1,600 horsepower Merlin engine with an 11-foot propeller, uh, and it won't miss a beat. So the first thing I would do, uh, and all air, um, pilots when they're flying a piston uh, aircraft, is go in, first of all, in the cockpit and do safety checks. Make sure that as I walk around the aircraft, that I'm not going to get myself in problem with that propeller. Uh, and then really it's just looking around the aircraft, looking for any leaks, any dents, any damage we're not expecting. I'll even go up and I'll move things like the ailerons, all the control surfaces and listen because it's push rods and um, pulleys between my control column and the, and the control surfaces. So I'm going to listen to see if there's any grating, any problems like that. But it's generally a, a you know, generic look over the aircraft. 